How's it going beautiful people? That last video you saw was a previous garden box that I was commissioned to build. And this what you're seeing right here is a smaller version of that same garden box that I'm building right now. Unfortunately, I didn't show the entire step of me collaborating and building this entire box, but it was pretty fun doing it. Um, I only got the inspiration to do it after I built this small box afterwards. Anyway, so what I did was I gathered all the scrap I could find and I created that box and I got some scrap piece of 2x4s as you see right there and I fashioned them to fit inside of it. Now what I'm doing with this 2x4 right here is I'm going to make some nice fitting legs to fit on top of there. Now this 2x4 isn't something that you see in the select section at your regular boxwood store but hey just going to a stationary garden no one's going to see it. However we're going to do some fine craftsmanship work to the best of our ability. So now what you see me doing right here is I'm measuring the entire length of the frame and then I measured the width of it because I want to notch the legs to fit inside of them. You see what I'm talking about at the end of the video. <laughs> so what I did is I transferred those measurements onto my 2x4 and I'm going to be using this miter saw as a radial arm. It's not something that I necessarily suggest that most people do. However, if you feel comfortable with the machine that you're using, go ahead and do it. So, that's what you see me doing right here, using this Bosch miter saw. And I'm taking my time to go into the wood, don't want the saw to bog down or anything like that. It's a little bit older saw, but again, it's still powerful enough to get the job done. So, I do suggest that if you want to do something like this, just take your time and you'll find your way. So after I then cut all three other pieces, I took a jigsaw and I did the best of my ability to square all of the cuts up so that they sit nice and flat as you see right there and make sure that it was at the proper, you know, squaring mark or squaring line that I needed to be on so everything was sit nice and flat. So you see me doing right here, I'm screwing down the rest of these legs and make sure everything is nice and tight. This Milwaukee saw was pretty good. I'm actually a DeWalt guy myself, but uh, I can say for this Red Giant, they're pretty good. I'm not saying I'm switching or anything, but it got the job done. <laughs> All right, so follow me on my way as I'll make it through this backyard to get some scraps. <laughs> See if I can find anything that's usable for some trim. Okay. A little something, something right here. Um, uh, I'm thinking about just ripping these down a little bit. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's a bad idea. Maybe flipping it using the opposite side. Yeah, I think I would do that. Or just use this side. That's what we'll do. So I ended up going with flipping it off the white side and using the rough side. Um, I thought it would look better. Um, the white kind of gave it a little bit of contrast that I wasn't necessarily looking for. So I ended up getting out this rigid, uh, nice table saw and I started ripping down these boards to the measurement that I wanted them to be at. I then went ahead and just ripped out and cut out this trim piece to make sure that it would fit right in the place where I needed to be. So because I like the way it looked, I'm now scrapping it onto another piece of trim.
So now I'm lining up my 45 that I just traced from my template piece of trim and I make sure it's nice to the miter saw. And now I'm going down and lining up as square as possible to that line as I can be. So now what I'm doing is I just flipped the camera around and I'm going towards the opposite side of the piece of trim and pretty much doing the same thing. So after this, here's what it looks like.